with Locke to know more about Biohazard recording their record than you did prior to me saying this, because Dominic spent some time with Biohazard in the studio while they were making their brand new album. And we're gonna be showing little bits and pieces over the next month leading up to the release of the new Biohazard record. And we're all kind of getting a feeling around the studio, and I guess a lot of people out in New York City too are getting the feeling that uh, this is gonna be Biohazard's year, that this record's really gonna do it for them. I'm hoping, because I really want that band to be huge. Let's take a look at uh, segment one of Dom hanging out with Biohazard. Tales of the hard side. Hard side. What's up, everybody? I'm Dominic. This is the Headbangers Ball. Right now, I'm in L.A. at A&M Studios. We're here for the making of the new Biohazard record. Throughout the course of these segments, I'm going to be taking you through actual making, the mixing, the writing, the recording, everything, right here, right now. So come on, check it out with me. Hey, we're here. Studio D for Dominic. Or Deluxe, Danny. They're in here. Should we knock? Nah. Right now, we want to know about the recording process. What are the, like, the steps into it? Danny. Well, uh, what usually happens is one of us uh, will come up with a, uh, well, musically anyway, we'll come up with something that we feel is a strong piece of music, a riff, or an idea. And uh, sometimes we'll make a little tape of it, show it to the rest of the guys, or we'll just come into rehearsal and just kick it around and start stirring up the biohazard stew, you know? And we just, like Bobby calls it, we put it to the machine, you know, the meat grinder. You, Bobby, you'll, you'll write a riff in your head, and then you'll say, hey, this is what I came up with, what do you think? And then somebody else will take it and add their two cents. And Yeah, this band's real fortunate because we, we've been blessed with something called chemistry between us. You know, a lot of bands don't have that. And if I come up with a riff, or anybody comes up with a riff, you know, we bounce it off the first one who picks up on it, you know, and we, we feed from there. You know, we feed off each other. Roll one every time you go into it. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. Roll in. like break the stereotype of bands go in there and go okay okay let's let's do the lyrics let's write the guitar part okay i got this part you guys just go in there and just this is it a lot of it is about moods like you know so let's say you know let's say one of us works somebody you know because we all write lyrics we all write music let's say somebody walks in i might walk in with some lyrics that's about something that's really like angry or really depressing and like bobby will jump up and go yo i got the angry riff you know and then like i'll be like yo but you know, then the song gets, you know, but then the mood of the lyrics change and it gets really doomy. And then Billy will go, but I got the doom riff, you know? And Deluxe will go, and I got the, I got the other part that links them together where you could put the hook chorus and he's got the chorus and he's got the solo and he's got the thing. And it's just, you know, it, it, all, it all comes together. So it's 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%, 100%. That's what Biohazard is. I, I, 100%, 100%, 100%. Sorry. Actually, everybody wants to know is, do you write the lyrics first, then music, or do you write the music first and then put the lyrics to the music? Lyrics and music are all part of the creative process. I mean, lyrics, you know, we're all always writing lyrics and we're all always writing music and we put them together and we make biohazard. You know, there are, we, we all have books full of poems, basically. You know, and these poems, you know, sometimes become biohazard songs, sometimes they just 
end up being things close to our heart that we hold on to. And hopefully someday we can get all our thoughts down onto music, you know. like have like pick somebody like write a song about somebody like for instance like a real close friend of yours and the song actually being about something that that close to you like a, a girlfriend a, a mother a father a... yeah all our all our aggravation is our inspiration so I mean like on our first record we had a song about you know this guy who screwed us over with our first record deal with our maze album which don't ever go out and buy that if you anyone sees that in store go steal it. steal it you know tell them we sent you um, I mean, this last album, we have a love song about, you know, ex-girlfriends called Disease. And uh, I mean, like, like, um, like Bob was saying, uh, Down for Life, you know, is about all our friends, all our people who are down with us from the beginning, people who are down with us now, you know, and some people who may be, you know, down in the future, but it's like people who believe, who, who are true believers, people who believe in biohazard for biohazard, not because, you know, we're getting popular and, and people want to jump on a bandwagon of what's trendy. You know, because there's people who are at our shows in 88 at CBGB's, you know, who know what we're all about and who know that, you know, we're writing the same kind of, you know, soulful, you know, music that we always did. We didn't hold down any set formula on this record. We kind of took it any way it came, you know, and some, some parts came out in like, classical style with nylon string guitars and pianos and some things came out like just weird sounding to us, different sounding, but other things came out more mainstream. The way we've always done it, you know, our mainstream, which is probably not anybody else's. Downstream, downstream, upstream, downstream without a path. But uh are there any are there any songs like are there any songs in this album that are like really, really deep, like really like uh, there's one there's one in particular that, that touches hard is um well, every time I listen to it, it's uh, it's called Love Denied, man. And it's it's about like dysfunctional families and, and child abuse, you know, and and uh, we wrote it from past experience, our own past experience and from people that we've seen, you know, it's just it's something that's very real and, and just couldn't go without me being uh, on this record. Well Billy, you have one song that I love, Five Blocks to the Subway. Five Blocks to the Subway! Watch Terry. Well, I love the whole album, but if any any song on the album that I sing over and over again, you know I sing it over and over again, that one line, that's like my favorite song on the whole album. I mean, my own personal favorite. What is that about? Five Bucks to the Subway was a poem written by Bobby's father a long time ago. And Bobby brought it into the, to, uh, brought into the band and read it to us. And we really liked it and we really dug it. And uh, we took that and inspired the song. And we reworked the lyrics and put it to the music. And it came out, it's about basically walking and doing what you got to do every day to earn your own keep and getting up every day, walking from our neighborhood to the, to the train, to the subway. It takes five blocks, and that song deals with what you see between those five blocks, within those five blocks. And the chorus is five blocks to the subway, just five blocks away. Five blocks to the subway! Just five blocks away! Five blocks to the subway! I could do that any day! Well, there you have it. Next week with Biohazard in the studio, lead guitar and vocals. I'm Dominic, see ya. The Headbangers Ball, I am Dominic, this is Evan, this is Billy, and right now they're about to do their lead vocals for the album. One thing I want to know is how can you guys set up the mics like face off each other? Why do that? We sing together, like, you know, instead of making it real sterile and stale, like where we play our bed tracks all live, you know, we, we like to, you know, face each other, get the energy of like a live, we like to get the energy of a live show, like we gotta have eye contact, we gotta feed off each other, because instead of uh, having one singer, you know, we have two singers and four background singers, sometimes the other guys sing, and it's, it's, it's live, you know, we're trying to just get it on. We just walk off of each other, that's it. Dominic here with Bobby Hamble, lead guitarist of Biohazard. Bobby, tell everybody, how do you go about doing guitar leads? Well, uh, I don't like to call them leads. I just 
you know, what we have going on is, you know, the four of us write the, all this music, you know. We lay it down, we set a mood, we set a vibe. I get a vibe off all the other guys. And what I sort of do is go in and listen to it and spontaneously, like, I don't try to write anything for it, you know. I just try to take it someplace at that moment. So I plug in and I play back the song. I really don't know what I'm going to play. Then I just, you know, let whatever's in here out. You know what I'm saying? Just to try and take it someplace, like, sort of enhance it paint over the top, you know? Music is created in layers, you know what I'm saying? Can we do that again, man? It's like... Ready for one of Ricky Rackman's Fit Bangers Ball. I am Dominic. This is Ed Stasium. He is the producer of the new Biohazard record. Ed, how'd you wind up working with a man like Biohazard? Well, I first saw them in um, April of 93. Um, a friend of mine who works at Warner Brothers, Tim Carr, said, you got to check out this band. I actually had heard of them before when I was working on a Ramones record. The year before, uh, Evan sent me a tape and a video, and I said, wow, this band is doing something and schedules didn't work out and I went to see them at uh, the Academy in New York and I was just floored. It was uh, the most monstrous show I've ever seen. There was a million kids on stage. Ain't that right, Billy? Yeah. They were all over the place, hundreds of them. I was one of them. <laughs> and um, after that I was sold on working with the band. Oh. Hey, Stacey's in a bag of tricks. No, no, that's my stuff. Give me my stuff. Don't touch that stuff. A lot of producers, okay? They control the band. They they make the album. They, basically, the producer makes the album. Does Biohazard have a lot of say in what they do? I mean, do they? Is it like a 50-50 thing? This no. It's a. This is their record. I, I consider myself to be one fifth of the band at this point. I'm the guy who. We'll work with them, and if, when they want something, we're going for what they want to get. You know what I mean? This is, this is their record. We're going for their sound. It's individual to each member of the band. So we taper everything in that way. May 24th, write it down. You go to the record store. This is Evan, Billy, Danny. Right now, these guys are checking out some artwork. Danny, what do you look at to make a, an album cover? I mean, which one of these is going to be the Biohazard album cover? Look, what, what well, has to say to say this gotta is be, it? It's got to be something that, that we feel as strongly about as we do about our music, you know? And uh, our record's called State of the World Address. It's got a bunch of songs on it that we poured our heart and soul into, and it means something. It's got to come from the music, you know what I'm saying? We record the music first, and then we step back, and then that kind of vibes us as to what direction we're going to go with the artwork, and then, you know, we let the artists know, and then they take it from there. But it's all part of the ingredients, you know what I'm saying? The artwork, the music, the drums, the guitars, it's all, it's all part of the big mix. Well, I'm Dominic. I hope you enjoyed my segment in the studio with Biohazard. I really appreciate these guys taking the time out and Thanks. hanging out with me. You know, Billy, any last words? Well, you guys seen a lot about Biohazard that no one sees that much. Come to see us live, you'll see what the real show is about and what we're all about. That's it. I want to thank everybody for watching. I want to thank everybody for their support. The new record's called State of the World Address. We will see you in the pit.
the town near you. Peace out. New records, very, very, very good. Recommended buying. If I say recommended, it's because I believe, not like anybody's telling me to go tell you to go get it. Check it out. It comes out May 24th. And